My dear student, hello. I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head, Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Harising Gaur Vishwavidyalaya, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today I am going to present a lecture of BSc first semester on the unit Research and Analysis Wing, RAW, which has been jointly prepared by myself and Ms. Neha Sharma, a PhD scholar and a UGC GRF at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Harising Gaur Vishwavidyalaya, Sagar. So let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. So today's lecture will be on research and analysis wing and it is divided in different modules. Module 1 will be introduction and history of RAW. Module 2 will be objectives of RAW. Module 3 will be organizational structure of law. Module 4 will be recruitment and training. Module 5 will be operations carried out by law and finally module 6 will be our conclusion. So today you will be very fascinated to know about most interesting system of the Indian intelligence services that is RAW. My dear student research and analysis wing acronym known as RAW or commonly we call it RAW is primary the external intelligence agency of the Republic of India. So what happened? After Sino-India war, that is, it was in the year 1962 and Indo-Pakistan war in the year 1965, government of India feels the necessity of an external intelligence agency which can fill the loop and holes of information gathered by the intelligence bureau which was dealing both internal and external intelligence. So, the primary function of RAW is the collection of external intelligence and counter-terrorism. In addition, it has also the responsibility for obtaining and analyzing information about foreign governments, corporations and persons to advise Indian policy makers. RAW is an effective and one of the primary instruments of India's national power. The headquarter of law is located at New Delhi. RAW is working with the motto of Dharmam Rakshito Rakshita, which basically means that who does not observe Dharma is destroyed, while who follow it meticulously is protected. So what is Dharma? Dharma in contest of RAW stands for the nation, the mother India. India's external intelligence agency, the research and analysis wing, as we know, is doing a great job now. But it has long faced allegation of meddling in the neighbor's affair. From the beginning of the foundation in the year 1968, primarily it focused to counter China's influence. Over time, it has shifted its focus to India's other traditional rival, that is Pakistan. RAW and Pakistan spy agency that is ISI, everyone know about it, the inter-service intelligence have been engaged in covert operation against each other for now over three decades. So my dear student, we will focus only on the brief history of RAW. RAW came into existence on the 21st day of September 1968 after the China-Indian War of 1962 and the Indo-Pakistan War of the 1965. These wars show the gaps of intelligence gathered by Intelligence Bureau. The then Prime Minister of India, late Srimati Indira Gandhi and her government felt the need for an agency that would raise an alarm and protect India before it went to war or was hit by a terror attack. This agency would counter or tackle them with whatever step they deemed necessary. Until 1968, the Intelligence Bureau, which was responsible for India's internal intelligence and also handled the external intelligence. But after India's miserable performance in the 1962 war with China, the need for a separate external intelligence agency was clear. During that conflict, our intelligence failed totally to detect Chinese buildup for the attack which was written by Major General V. K. Singh, a retired army officer who did a stint in RAW in his book 
2007 which entitled India's external intelligence secrets of research and analysis wing as a result india established a dedicated external intelligence agency the research and analysis wing during the last 40 years the organization has expanded and maintains itself as one of the greatest intelligence agencies expert says ross power and its role in india's foreign policy have varied under different prime ministers ross first director was rameshwar nath kao ross claims that it contributed to several foreign policies successfully the creation of bangladesh in the year 1971 was also honored to the raw india's growing influence in afghanistan sikkim's accession to india in 1975 was also credited to raw not only this the security of india's nuclear program the success of african liberation movement during the cold war were also credited to the raw what are the objectives of raw the main objective of any intelligence agency is to collect intelligence and information the prime objective of raw is also to collect the intelligence not the brain but intelligence means what the other country is planning or thinking about us it collects information via espionage psychological warfare subversion sabotage and assassination it also maintains collaboration with other countries and their intelligence agencies for example it is having contacts with fsb of russia nds the afghan agency israel's mossad the cia of america and mi6 of england have been well known ro has been active in obtaining information through third countries like afghanistan the united kingdom hong kong myanmar and singapore about what other countries are thinking about india though initially ro was intended for collecting intelligence at nearby india's national border but later on it maintained a strong presence in all field of intelligence gathering so my dear student what are the objectives of ro the objectives of ro are to monitor the activities which have a direct bearing on india's national security and the formation of the foreign policies like political military economic and scientific developments in the country it also monitors the political and military development in the adjoining countries which have direct bearing on india's national security it also have covert operations to safeguard india's national interest anti terror operations and neutralizing terror elements posing a threat to india it also provides security to india's nuclear program to watch the development of international communism and schism because both have a direct impact on the communist parties in india to gather intelligence on leadership capabilities and organization of various insurgency groups operating in adjacent state that pose a national security or integrity threat and to neutralize these using covert operation assassinations sabotage indirect political coercion and exo agent and inter agent coalition wherever possible it also helps to control and limit the supply of military hardware to pakistan from mostly european countries america and importantly china to monitor technical and technological espionage under the auspice of the national technical facilities organization or commonly known as ntfo the further geopolitical goals encourage a strategic balance and external coalition with domestic insurgency groups by establishing working relationship with successionist agencies abroad molding international public opinion and influence foreign governments with the help of the strong and vibrant indian diaspora in the present time india's external agency draw is one of the best agencies in the world it's quite interesting a combination of military 
academicians, bureaucrats and policemen was a fine start for Raw. Later it is molded itself on the lines of CIA. The head of Raw is designated Secretary Research in the Cabinet Secretariat, which is under direct command of Prime Minister of India, reports on the administrative basis to the Cabinet Secretary who reports to the Prime Minister. But generally, the Secretary Research reports to the National Security Advisors daily. The head of the Research and Analysis Wing, the External Intelligence Agency enjoys a greater autonomy of functioning as he has a direct access to the Prime Minister. The control of the Cabinet Secretary over the RAW is limited to the administrative and financial matters with very little say in operational and policy matters. Additional Director is responsible for the Office of Special Operations and Intelligence collected from different countries processed by large number of joint secretaries. As far as the secretary research is concerned, two special secretaries and one special director of the ARC, the Aviation Research Center. Apart from these, four additional secretaries are responsible for different geographical regions and a large number, above generally 14 numbers joint secretaries who are the functional head of various desks. Intelligence is usually collected from a variety of sources by field officers and deputy field officers. It is either pre-processed by a senior field officer or by a desk officer. The desk officer then passes the information to joint secretary and then on to the additional secretary and from there it is disseminated to the concerned end user. My dear student, do you know one thing? RAW is also having different regional headquarters which have direct link to overseas stations and are headed by a controlling officer who keeps record of different projects assigned to field officers who are posted abroad. Another important branch under the operational control of the RAW is the Directorate General of Secretary or commonly known as DGS. This agency has oversight over organizations like the Special Frontier Forces, the Special Services Bureau and matters related with the military is maintained through the Military Intelligence Advisory Group and the Military Advisor to the Director of RAW. So, now we will discuss about the recruitment. Initially, RAW relied primarily on trained intelligence officers who were recruited directly. They belong to the external wing of the intelligence bureau. Many personals are also taken from the military, police and other services. Later on, RAW began directly recruiting graduates from universities. So here you have a chance. The research and analysis service started from 1983 and RAW created its own service cadre to absorb talent from other UPSC Group A officer cadre. Direct recruitment at class 1 executive level is from civil services officers undergoing foundation course at Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. So you have to clear this examination. At the end of the course, RAW conducts a campus interview. It's not that easy. Based on a selection of psychological test and the interview, candidates are inducted into RAW for a period of one year. During this period, they have an option of rejoining their parent service if they wish so, after which they can be permanently absorbed into the research and analysis service. Officers are also deputed from the Indian Revenue Services. Additionally, recruitment is also by lateral deputation from the armed forces or the civil services officers. The civil and defense services officers permanently resign their cadre and join the RAS. But now there is a provision to rejoin their parent service after servicing a specific period in RAW, if they wish to do so. Most of the secretaries have been officers from the Indian Police Service. RAW also employs a number of linguists and other experts in various fields. The service condition of RAW officers are governed by the Research and Analysis Wing, 
Recruitment Cadre and Services Rule 1975. Therefore, we can say that some officers of RAW are members of Specialized Service RAS, but mostly other officers are serving on direct deportation from other services. Apart from this, RAW is also having other sub-organizations like Aviation Research Center, Radio Research Center, or electronic and technical services which have a great capacity for gathering and recruiting technical officers. So here is another chance for you dear candidates. Now my dear student, we will focus on the training in RAW. Training is completed in two terms. First one is basic training while other one is the advanced training. So my dear student who are aspiring to join RAW should pay attention. The basic training. The main motto of basic training is to make familiar the recruit with the real world of intelligence and espionage which is totally different from the spies of fiction. So basic training starts with pep talk to boost the morale of the new recruit which is a 10 day phase. Common uses, tradecraft techniques and classification of information are taught. This is not the real life, this is the real life training. Financial and economic analysis space technology, information security, energy security and scientific knowledge are also given to the trainees. The recruit is made to specialize in a foreign language and introduced to geostrategic analysis. Am I scary? I am not trying to fear you out of raw services. During basic training, different case studies of other agencies like CIA, KGB, ISI, Mossad and secret intelligence services are presented for studies. The trainee is also taught the intelligence organizations do not identify who is friend and who is a foe. The country's foreign policies. Raw's training institute is situated at Gurgaon. Basic classroom training to raw officers are imparted at Raw's training institute. A multidisciplinary school of economic intelligence is also being set up at Mumbai to train intelligence officers in investigating economic crimes like money laundering for terror purposes. So my dear student, if you are not afraid and not scared and you still are determined to join RAW, here is the advanced training. After completing basic training, the recruits are attached to a field intelligence bureau. Training here lasts for one to two years. In advanced training, candidate is trained to work in unfavorable climatic condition like extreme cold or extreme hot weather. During night exercise under realistic conditions, personnel are taught infiltration and exfiltration. Personnel are instructed to avoid capture and if caught how to face interrogation. Personnel learn the art of reconnoir make contacts and the numerous skill of operating an intelligence mission. At the end of the field training, the new recruit is brought back to the school for final polishing. As in inter-services, self-defense is very important. Therefore, before his or her deployment in the field, he is given exhaustive training in the art of self-defense and the use of technical espionage devices. It's same as a commando training. The personnel are also drilled in various administrative disciplines so they could take their place in the foreign missions without arising any single suspicion. The personnel are now ready to operate under the cover of an embassy to gather information, set up his own network of informers, moles or operatives as the task may require. Field train in completed in the Indian Military Academy whose headquarter is situated at Dehradun. There are many different secret operations carried out by the external intelligence agencies of India that is raw. But here we are going to discuss some of those. So let's talk about first operation Smiling Buddha. Operation Smiling Buddha is not the operation to increase the money by keeping Smiling Buddha in our home. This operation is related to maintain secrecy of the first nuclear test by India in the year 1974 and RAW played a major role in maintaining this as a secret mission. 
It was in fact such a secret mission that even the intelligence agencies of other countries like China and USA were unaware of any such activity by India. RAW is the external intelligence agency but this is the first time where RAW completed its duty inside India. This operation was in relation to the nuclear program of India so it was the first task of RAW to maintain its security and secrecy until 18th May 1974 when India detonated a 15 kiloton nuclear device at Pokhran, thereby gaining the valuable membership of the nuclear curve. It was one of the most remarkable achievements of India as all the intelligent agencies of the world had remained in obvious to the matter until it actually took place and needless to say, took the whole world by surprise. And for all these, the credit goes to the great Indian scientist and the raw. Next we see Operation Sikkim. So what was Operation Sikkim? Do you know? Operation Sikkim. Now Sikkim is a part of Indian territory, but till 1975, the state was ruled by Maharaja Chogal or Dharma Raja. Actually, Sikkim is a hilly state in the Himalayan range and is bordered by foreign countries like Bhutan, Nepal and Tibet. China can take help from these countries to counter India. In 1972, then Prime Minister, late Srimati Indra Gandhi, ordered RAW to undertake and establish a pro-Indian democratic government there. The efficient RAW was able to solve this task and on 26th April 1975, Sikkim is recognized as the 22nd state of Indian Union. So you can see, so we have protected ourselves from the vested Chinese interest. Now we see Operation Chanakya. What is Operation Chanakya? RAW had tried to maintain peace in Kashmir Valley by Operation Chanakya. It was the operation to infiltrate various ISI-backed Kashmiri separatist group. RAW did a great job in the infiltration of areas and collected military intelligence. It also succeeded to provide evidence of ISI's involvement to provoke Kashmiri separatist groups by funding and training them. RAW not only succeeded in unearthing the links of ISI and separatist groups but also neutralizing the militancy in Kashmir Valley. RAW is also credited for creating a split in Hijbul Mujahideen, Kargil War. Every one of us know about the sad story of Kargil. But you know RAW was heavily criticized. In 1999, for failing to provide intelligence that could prevent the full-scale war between India and Pakistan. But what is the ground reality? The ground reality is something different. Raw officers pointed the finger at politicians and claiming that they had provided all the required information. However, Raw was successful in intercepting a telephonic conversation between Pervez Musharraf, the then Pakistan Army Chief, who was in Beijing, and his Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Mohammad Aziz in Islamabad. The tape later on confirmed the Pakistan's involvement in Kargil Wall, so RAW could not be blamed for that. Mumbai attack. 26-11 was the black day for Indians, but about two to six months before 26-11, Mumbai attack, RAW had intercepted several telephonic calls which pointed that Pakistan-based terrorists are planning to attack a Mumbai hotels. However, there was coordination failure and no follow-up action was taken. When the attackers were sailing towards Mumbai, few hours before the attack, a RAW technician monitored satellite transmission in which attackers and handlers were doing conversation. The technician found the conversation as being suspicious and passed them on to his superiors. RAW immediately alerted the office of the National Security Advisor, but the intelligence was ignored. After the terrorist attack in Mumbai, RAW technician started monitoring the six phones used by the terrorist and recorded conversations between the terrorist and their handlers. And few months later, they nabbed Sheikh Abdul Khwaja, 
one of the handlers of 2611 attacks. So this is the success story of RAW. So RAW has done a great help to the Indian security system. After the discussion of history, foundation and organizational structure of RAW as well as cases solved by the agency, we can conclude that to maintain peace and security all over the country, RAW is playing a great part. It is gathering the intelligence from neighboring countries before starting a war, keeping an eye on the gathering of nuclear bombs and missile collection, securing national border from outside the country. But According to my point of view, it is very bad that these officers who are undercover agents of RAW are not getting full support and security from the side of the government of India. Even after the death, their bodies are not getting the love of their motherland. One undercover agent of RAW, whose name was Black Tiger, given by Prime Minister, did a great job for Indian intelligence but didn't get motherland's love after death. In a letter posted to his family by himself from the foreign jail, he wrote, Kya Bharat jaise bade desh ke liye kurbani dene walon ko yehi milta hai? Is this a reward a person gets for sacrificing his life for Mother India? At last, I would suggest the government of India should change its policy related with the spies. With all these information, here we come to the end of today's interesting lecture on RAW. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Professor Devashish Bose signing off for now. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQ, quizzes and LORs at www.cec.nic.in. Till then, Goodbye and thanks for hearing me.